A few weeks ago, I made a series of videos about the Pokemon types that I don't plan on translating into my own creature collector. And in the last one, I mentioned how I might look into adding a new type. See, Pokemon started with 15 types, and then added two more in the sequel, and they ran with that 17 types for quite a long time, until they added their final type, Fairy, in 2013 with Generation 6. Ever since then, we've seen 18 types in this franchise, which honestly is a lot to keep track of. But that doesn't stop fans from creating their own types and explore their own flavor of mons. Do I think Pokemon is going to add a new type in the future? I highly doubt it, but should that stop fans from trying to make their own fan creations? Not at all. Who cares if your creation is close to a franchise or not? It's not like you're doing a prompt for a job interview or anything. Let people have their fun, but this kind of creativity is especially needed when you're trying to go indie. So I've been looking at some of the most popular fan types, and today I'm gonna talk about two of them, that being light and sound. I'll tell you right off the bat that I'm not planning on using either of these specific types because I got some designs that kinda go against it already. Still, the themes of light and sound are completely valid, so I'll be telling you about what the types are like before I show you my own designs and why I'm a little shaking on adding these particular themes to my personal project. People make so many assumptions just from reading the title. In my video about dragons, there were quite a few comments say how I'm removing it because they're not scientific enough, so why not remove fairy type? Well, in the video, I literally say that I'm not removing them because of them not being sciencey enough. No, I'm removing dragon type because it seems very custom to just Pokemon, and both dragon and bug type feel like themes that are based off of a body type being lizard-like or arthropods. So I'm saying that I'll still have dragons and bugs, but not dedicate a whole theme about them. So why am I keeping fairy type? Well, currently, my fairy designs are about being charming, you know, healthy, clean, sweet. I mean, gluten is not healthy, but, you know, sweet bread and stuff. And honestly, I might break it up. So there's this fan type called the light type, which is supposed to be the opposite force to dark. Where dark type in Pokemon was originally meant to represent evil, light type is more about being divine or being morally right, but can also encapsulate literally shining a light. Now, I know in Pokemon, the opposing forces against Dark are Fairy, but also fighting in Bug-type, with the latter two kind of already being heroic, though that aspect isn't outright stated in most of the designs we see nowadays. So, Light could have a place there. But did you know, Pokemon has already had Light Mons before. In the Neo Destiny Pokemon trading cards in 2001 and 2002, they had a special category of mons called Light and Dark. Even though Dark was already a type in the games, these cards were all about would you be an angle or the devil? Would you choose the hero path or the villain story? It's a common trope, but I think the type is interesting because it has that other meaning too, you know, giving off light, like bioluminescence. It's definitely an enticing type, especially because I do have quite a few mods that give off light. But there's a big hiccup, especially because there's a design that prevents me from doing so. Let me talk about it. So what is light? In physics, there's the photon, a teeny tiny particle of energy that's uh, it's not just a particle. Photons travel in electromagnetic waves across the vacuum of space, but photons aren't the same thing as electrons. Though you could use photons to knock electrons off of atoms. Anyway, so photons can come from our sun all the way through the nothingness of space, through your window, bounce off of some stuff, and finally enter your eye. See, at a super tiny level, also called the quantum level, particles like the photon aren't always like little dots, as they can behave like waves. There's a famous double slit experiment where light was shown through two slits. If you send in a bunch of particles, I guess it's like using spray paint that's pretty far away from the wall. Even if you hold up a stencil, you'll end up getting paint everywhere. I guess it's not exactly the same, but it's similar. But if you send in a wave, like ripples on a pool, the waves would go on and create a pattern of interference with each other. Because the double slit splits up the initial wave. 
So what does light do in a double slit? Well, with no observers, when one photon is sent out, you just get one dot on the detector. Which makes sense, because you only sent out one photon. But if you send out a lot of them, weirdly all the dots make up an interference pattern, as if it's kinda traveling like a wave. But if you put an observer where the slits are, and you start to know which slit the particle is going through, once you know which slit that photon is going through, Suddenly, the detector now gets readings all over the place, as if the photons were traveling like particles. Now, the Heisenberg's microscope suggests that maybe looking at it, the observer knocks the photon out of line, while the uncertainty principle says that making that current measurement causes future uncertainty. There hasn't been a direct explanation as of yet, but hey, we got this funny meme out of it. So yeah, light itself is quantumly tiny, and stuff like that often exhibit this wave-particle duality. So here's Fotora. They kinda look like a security camera, but their main gimmick was that they turn into a particle-slinging fire type into a wave-spewing electric type. How do they switch forms? Well, I'm going to lie to you today and just say that they switch according to their moves. I promise that the actual gimmick I have in mind is much more of a reference to the observer in the double slit experiment, but I'm not ready to explain my game as of now. Heck, even some of the stats here are lying. I've been lying to you this whole time. Why else would I not put the numbers in? And all the abilities you know I can't use, they're all lies. I'm lying. Everything's a lie. A lot of people have also wanted Pokemon to include a sound type. And yeah, there's a lot of good candidates for this type. However, I'm personally in the camp where I think it works better as a move category that can go through substitutes, get boosted by certain abilities, and giving normal types some extra representation. But that's Pokemon. In your own creation, you should feel free to use something like it, you know? Design your battle system around it. I mean, it's clearly a very exciting theme, as some people make whole regions just off of music. So what is sound? It's a wave. It's the air accordioning in and out to move this force along. Now, I personally felt that sound was a bit too close to my arrow type, which is like the wind. Additionally, I didn't really have that many mons to justify this theme. I mean, I could make more, but I don't really want my type to limit me in a certain field of science if you get what I'm saying. Dendro type, name pending, went over ecology and genetics, but also some chemistry and physics. Not all of my toxic types are about chemistry, and not all of my neurotypes are about math. Sound sounds- whoa, that, that sounded weird. Well, the type sounds very physics based. And here's one of my mods that would fit this theme. Radar dishes are shaped so that waves are bounced from the dish and into a focal point, where you can put the receiver. It's basically like a concave mirror. So Blip Pup here is a dog, fennec fox thing, with big ol' ears to listen to sounds that are far away. Oh, and the ability? Haha, <laughs> what do you mean? It just has anticipation, like it knows the forecast. Ha, <laughs> I'm, I'm totally not lying. Alright, alright, so I know that I showed you that it should have Doppler effect as the ability. So what is the Doppler effect? I could go over that at least. Since sound is a wave, when the source of the sound versus your current position changes, the wave you experience would change. When an ambulance siren comes towards you, the sound waves get to you sooner than if the ambulance and you were just still. So the sound gets a higher frequency. And when the ambulance is moving away from you, that sound wave needs to travel a longer distance to get to you, making that sound have a lower frequency. The same thing happens with light, where astronomers who look at stars and say that the ones moving closer are called to be under blue shift, and the stars moving away are experiencing red shift. That is the Doppler effect. And here's Kadar, Blipup's evolution. I won't tell you what this ability does, it's not the same as Pokemon's anticipation at all, but again, I'm not ready to explain how my game works just yet. 
Still got a lot of IRL stuff that frankly doesn't seem to get solved anytime soon, but I'm aiming to have a prototype by the end of the year. So check out my Twitch streams for more. I want to reiterate that light and sound are perfectly okay types to have in a project. I don't see Pokemon adding them, or any other type for that matter, but that shouldn't stifle your creativity. Some people do well with more restrictions, some people do well with going bonkers with their own ideas, and who knows, maybe you could make something unique out of it. Disclaimer, I don't think Bugsnax was made like this by the way, this is just a theoretical example. It's a shame that I'm not planning on using either for my region as of now, but what I really need to do is to take a look back after I have all my mods and figure out what themes I'm missing. Hey, it's a long journey, but at least we're making progress. As I said before, I stream on Twitch at Nordist, where I try to stream on Mondays and Thursdays around 8pm EST. The schedule might change in the future, but if you have any questions, ask me over there. I want to thank my Patreon patrons now. Thank you my Patreon patrons. Some of the higher tiers would have access to behind scenes sketches and other bonus content. But you know you can always like and share this video for free. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.